What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty awesome pistol. We're going to be talking about the CZ Tactical Sport Orange. Now this is what I would call the Gen 2 of the Tactical Sport. It is a semi-auto, single action only, 9mm pistol designed for competition, but it can also flex into things like home defense, certainly plinking around and having fun, and if you're feeling ballsy you could even carry it. It has a 20 round magazine capacity and it comes from the factory with three magazines. It is a 5.25 inch cold hammer forged barrel and it's 47 ounces in overall weight making it a pretty big girl but with the added weight in the internal slide rails it handles recoil with the best of them. Unlike most CZ-75s, it is single action only, similar to the previous Tactical Sport, so the hammer has to be cocked in order for it to fire. But the upside to this is you get a very consistent, very, very awesome about 1.7 pound trigger pull. The trigger is so good, it's even better than a lot of my 1911s, including my Wilson Combat, which is a $3,000 gun. The CZ Orange has a number of upgrades from the original Tactical Sport, as you can see here. It borrows some features from the Checkmate and incorporates a few new ones as well with the slimmer tr trigger guard, which is nice. You can also see the undercut. It's a lot more comfortable than my original AccuShadow, also from CZ. It has a little bit different grip geometry, which honestly I didn't notice. It has finer checkering, similar to the Checkmate, which is the most expensive version of the CZ. It is basically this pistol, but in open gun fashion with a compensator, and you can also put a red dot on it, but you can put a red dot on this pistol as well, as long as you have this mount right here. This is the RMR mount for the Checkmate, which also fits the CZ Orange. It goes in this little mounting plate right underneath this grip tape that I have here just like that, and you can mount an RMR over the slide, which is for most competition shooters the preferred method. That way the dot doesn't move back and forth, and the weight of the red dot doesn't affect the cycle of the gun itself. You can also put a thumb rest on there as well, and it fits just like this. Well, no it doesn't either. It fits just like that. And uh, that is, was a problem for me because since I have really big hands, you can see where this would be and you can see where my thumb ends up. Uh, it's just too close for me to use comfortably and I don't feel like it added that much benefit for me over the skateboard tape, so I just went with the skateboard tape. It also has uh, advanced sights over the previous models. Uh, these are definitely my favorite CZ sights I've ever used. Wow, I'm very impressed over the original Bomar adjustable rear sight that my CZ AccuShadow came with. If you notice, the CZ AccuShadow that I own and love dearly is not on the table for comparison, and the reason why that is is because of the old Bomar sights. I've actually had to send it into CZ Custom to have them fixed twice. Once because the uh, set screw and all that got all messed up and it kept uh, a auto adjusting on me in the middle of matches and things like that so that pissed me off and the second time I had to send it in was because the cut itself for the sight was so loose that I could push the sight back and forth with just my fingers so I had to have it sent in and they're going to do something insane for me I guess because they told me it was going to take about six months to get my gun back so a little upset about that but I guess I get it, they're very busy. Another cool feature of it is that it has these uh, these uh, serrations on the top here to prevent glare. I've never had glare off the top of my gun, but they look cool nonetheless. This is the checkering that I was talking about a minute ago. Very, very nice checkering, along with the checker and the grip as well. Makes it very comfortable, but yet very stern in the hand, so you can shoot very, very quickly. So in the title of this video, I said that this probably is the best factory CZ on the market, even over the Checkmate, right? And as I said, the Checkmate is essentially this, but with the compensator. The reason why I like this over the Checkmate is because although I haven't fired the Checkmate very much, I've seen lots of people fire them, and I know that they have reliability issues based on the comp. So if you're getting this for anything else other than open division, I would suggest this gun by far because it is the most reliable CZ that I've ever shot. I would say that it's on par with all the other CZs because my AccuShadow is very reliable as well, but this gun I actually tested the crap out of. You know, sometimes I put between 500 to 1,000 rounds into a gun for testing because sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't, but I have somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 rounds through this, and most of that was actually super cheap polymer ammo. Uh, because I have a lot of it, I like to shoot polymer ammo because it's better for the environment, 
and it is uh, frangible, so you can shoot steel very close without any sort of repercussions to your face. This gun in particular is one of the several guns that I own that will function with it just fine. Not only that, but it will shoot the 147 grain freedom munitions, which gives guns like the MP 2.0 problems. It will shoot Wolf. It will shoot Agula 1 124. It had no problem with defensive loads. This gun literally shot every ammo that I put in it without me having to exchange recoil springs or anything, which does come with the gun. It's very impressive. The, re the uh, reliability, not just in competition guns, not just in steel frame guns, it is second to none for any semi automatic pistol that I've ever fired. Now quick, we'll run over what comes in the box really fast, although I did that in the opening. It comes with three magazines, as you can see here. One's in the gun. It comes with a bunch of springs. It doesn't come with this optics mount. I paid 100 bucks for that extra because I do plan on doing some serious long distance shooting with this in the future. It comes with oil and it comes with all kinds of other stuff, standard gun lock and that kind of thing. It actually comes in a case big enough you could fit an Uzi in it. My CZ Scorpion, for example, could actually fit in this box. Now that we got that dusty old box out of the way, let's talk about some other things that make this pistol awesome besides just the reliability. And the second thing I think of when I think of this pistol is I think of accuracy. Holy crap is this pistol accurate. Not only is it extremely reliable, but it's extremely accurate as well. Other than my STI Apiero, my 2011 pistol, which I also compete with on occasion, this is the most accurate pistol that I own. Semi-automatic pistol anyway. For me, the most accurate pistol I own because I shoot semi-automatics better than I shoot revolvers. It has one one of the best triggers you'll ever feel, as I said before, somewhere right around between 1.5 and 1.9 pounds. At least that's what mine breaks at. I can show you that here. Very, very short travel. Very, very short reset, single action only. Absolutely amazing trigger. Pair that with these phenomenal sights. Uh, they are phenomenal, by the way. Probably the best sights, as far as fiber optic in the front, blacked out rear, probably the best sights I've ever gotten on a factory pistol, ever. Very thin uh, front sight with a very thin rear sight as well, which actually doesn't slow you down at all, but it increases accuracy a great deal. So great sights, great trigger, make great accuracy. Even for me, it's easy to hit at 100 yards with this pistol and even beyond. I'm actually considering taking this out to 200 yards maybe, maybe throwing a red dot on and just seeing how far we can shoot. Uh, one thing I have this zeroed for is that polymer ammo, which is very high velocity, so it doesn't have quite the bullet drop that other uh, ammunitions have, even nine millimeter. So I'd like to see how paired the ammo with this and maybe an RMR, see how far we can go out and shoot this thing. Now as far as features and ergonomics go, the first thing I gotta say is, wow, is this a good looking gun. Now I've heard somebody say this was ugly and how dare you? How dare you? From the beautiful lines and the awesome grips, even the base plates are pretty awesome. This is one of the best looking pistols that I own. It also has very low recoil. One reason for that is it's a very heavy pistol with a very long barrel. You know, as you can see there, muzzle flip, how that works, right? The longer the barrel, the more weight out front, the less muzzle flip you'll have. Also, the heavier the gun and the lighter slide traditionally, the less recoil you'll have as well because you have less reciprocating mass. So that's one of the reasons why the CZ has such a low recoil in comparison to other pistols. Not only that, but it has the internal slide rails which decrease bore axis. So it's a heavier gun, it's got a longer barrel, uh, lighter slide, and it's got a lower bore axis. Not only that, but it's got an incredibly comfortable grip and you can get super high in the beaver tail. So recoil is almost next to nothing. The grips are very cool and the checkering is very functional. One thing I don't like as far as ergonomics go is the magwell. It looks really cool and it's a really great design if not for one thing. As you see here, what I don't like about magwells is a lot of time they'll give you this big open space to hit, but they'll leave a little bit of a ridge there. And on polymer pistols, it's super easy to take a file and go down. But a $1,700, $1,800 pistol, uh, you get a little worried about doing that. I'll probably do it in the future, maybe take a Dremel and go around and just smooth this little rail out here, because this big magwell doesn't do a whole lot of good if you're sticking in a mag and it gets stuck on this ring right here, which happened to me quite a bit. Another plus for ergonomics over the CZ Shadow that I found out is the undercut of the trigger guard. I used to get a crazy amount of buildup on my finger because I used to just beat the crap out of it, uh, choking up as high as I possibly could. Well, they actually fixed that quite a bit with this, and there's not quite as much of a a substantial edge there that really messes with you when you shoot. Uh, the mag release is extended and awesome, very awesome. So extended in fact that I don't have to break my grip at all to do any reloads. 
just come down and hit it but it also doesn't really get in the way. I know a lot of people say they accidentally hit extended magazine releases. For me, that's never bothered me. Slide release, again, extremely awesome. Uh, it's obviously a little harder with the magazine in, but as you can see there, really easy to do. Uh, safety, extremely positive, extremely tactile. One disadvantage to the safety, I actually don't like the Ambi safety that much, so I took a Dremel and I smoothed this out because it did have quite a bit of a sharp edge there, and when I shot, I noticed that my hand was digging in. Now, I also have big hands and I ride pistols really high. So uh, maybe that could be why as well. I, I didn't accidentally engage it or anything because I always ride my thumb on the uh, on the left side. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't push it up and accidentally engage it unless I went underneath. Now, one disadvantage to the long sight radius that you get here, this does have a little bit less muzzle flip, but it is a little bit slower regardless in target transitions and draw because of that little bit of extra weight that you got to muscle around. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but you know, a tenth of a second here, a tenth of a second there, it is a little bit slower moving from target to target than a shorter barreled CZ would be, but it also does increase the accuracy and reduce the recoil, so that's a trade-off you're gonna have to decide whether or not you want. It doesn't have a Picatinny rail underneath, like like my AccuShadow does. Now, a lot of people say, well, it's a competition gun, why would you need that? Because if you just wanted to buy one gun, let's say, if you just wanted to shoot USPSA or IDPA, and you also wanted to have a good home defense gun that you're used to and put thousands of rounds through and know how to operate, it would be nice to be able to put a rail on this to use it for home defense in a pinch if you wanted to. But you can't, so maybe you could tape a mag light to it or something. We're getting a price here, and you have to remember that price is relative to the value of the firearm. And the price of this gun is not cheap. It retails right around $1,700, although you can find it for about 15 or so, maybe even 14 if you get lucky. I did pay $1,700, I did pay retail because I bought it, I think, at least a couple of days after it came out. They were very hard to find initially. I'm lucky I didn't pay more than that. I saw some going for around 2,000. Honestly, at $2,000 for me, this gun would even be worth it. I'm a CZ fan, I shoot them really well, at least in my opinion I do. I like to shoot them, and this is about as good as you could possibly get. I would prefer to have the thicker grips, honestly, but these grips look so good, and the Checkmate style grips are a little bit harder to find, the ones with the magwell, so I just stuck with these and they worked fine. Again, if they came out with orange grips that were a little bit thicker for this, I would go for it. But other than that, and some of the other downsides that I talked about, for $1,700, what you're getting is a comparable product to high-end 2011s, like an SVI, STI, things like that, for a much reduced cost. Even my STI Apparel was $700 more than this, and this can hang with no problem whatsoever. The only difference between that gun and this gun is just personal preference. All in all, I would have to give this pistol a solid 10 out of 10. It's super accurate, super reliable, looks great, feels great, really low recoil. I mean, what more could you want from a competitive pistol? Other than a rail, maybe, for home defense, I just don't see how you could even improve this. I'm sure it'll probably be a Gen 3, and I'm sure CZ will do that. But honestly, other than a couple of nitpicks, this pistol is fantastic. Great trigger, great sights, great everything. As I said, solid 10 out of 10. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.